Yeah, this happened. Welcome to Hidden Valley Homestead, where my wife Olivia and I escaped the city to homestead our off-grid property in Idaho. This is our journey. Welcome to North Idaho. So we had some pretty crazy, crazy winds. Uh, the strongest that, that uh, our neighbors had ever seen in this valley over here, Hidden Valley. And um, yeah, that happened. So as you guys can see, I put a giant slug of concrete, three and a half, uh, 40 inches deep into the ground. And I have bolts in here. Let's just, let's get a look, a good uh, close up on that. So I did two uh, three inch square tube posts with the rack that I can tilt. And uh, I'll show you guys some better detail after I get this thing tilted right back up. But amazingly, none of the panels are broken. It's actually still charging right now, 10 amps with a, a little bit of a sun in the sky. Let me spin you around and show you that. It's cloudy, but I'm still getting 10 amps. So we had some super, super high winds. There were trees down all over the place. Power was out in uh, the local towns. Uh, Libby couldn't get home. There was a 12 inch tree across our drive. And uh, it was a pretty intense uh, night yesterday. So uh, trees barely missed me as I was driving through another part of town. 10 minutes after we left, uh, a pass through a, uh, uh, on a road, a, a, a big tree took out a power line, knocked out power to the whole town. Anyway, this is uh, the fun weather up in Idaho, and we get some pretty crazy winds and whatnot. And uh, I did not build this thing solid enough, so I had been meaning to put a third leg right about here and do a Y shape or some sort of a tie that tie that third leg in here to really make a tripod uh, embedded in concrete that would uh, never go anywhere. Well, I didn't get to it in time, and so now I have this. So anyway, I'm gonna take these panels apart. And uh, thankfully, the way I did it, let me show you guys the Unistrut. I am super, super insanely impressed with how strong Unistrut is. So I'll spin you around and show you that. Look at that, guys. I did three Unistrut. Those are 20 foot Unistruts holding up all of those panels. Okay, this thing was a giant sail. And no, it, yes, it landed on top of the propane tank, but it's the propane tank's protected. There's nothing to break. Thankfully, it didn't hit the pipe right there. But uh, anyway, look at those unit struts, guys. Uh, they held up and they didn't bend. Pretty amazing. My conduit did not snap. I used uh, poly instead of PVC, so the poly was kind of flexible. And uh, it's actually still charging. It didn't break or cut any wires or anything, thankfully. So I just have to basically tilt this thing back up. I'm going to detach the box right now, but I got to get these panels off. So guys, I don't know where that footage went. Uh, the struggle is real I'm trying to put videos out and um, record this stuff. It's a lot of work guys. So sorry about uh, missing all the footage for taking apart this thing and reassembling it. So I'm just going to continue on and, and kind of explain what, what we did. Okay, so you guys can see the system that I have. I've got eight Trojan T105s. Each one is rated at 225 amp hours. They are six volt batteries, deep cycle. And they are wired in a series, four batteries to make 24 volts. So I'll have two battery banks at 24 volts. And the way I understand it is that two battery banks at 24 volts means you have 225 amp hours at 24 volts you have a great big bank of them so i basically have 450 amp hours of storage capacity at 24 volts this is my inverter it is a 4000 watt trace engineering power conversion center and it is wired directly to my panel which is up here the, the power from my generator and I have a 220, 8,500 watt generator that comes into my step down and that steps down from 220 to 120 and into the into my power box, into my power panel and back feeds back into the inverter which charges the batteries and they are hooked up directly to the batteries back in here. 
This used to be my charge controller. This thing is ancient. So the rest of this stuff is, is still pretty old, but it's still in great shape. But that charge controller was ancient. Let me show you the solar panels. Oh, before I, uh, before I move you guys from here, here are my new charge controllers. Both of those are 60 amps each, and I've got two banks of solar panels that are going to these charge controllers. Uh, six panels going to each one. So I have about almost 2,000 watts going to each one of these things. I'll show you those solar panels in just a second. You guys remember these solar panels? You can see them up on top of the deck. There was four of these things. These things are so old. Let's flip these things around. Here they are, guys, unisolar. Each one of these things, 64 watts, 3.8 amps. Oh, is there a date on these things? April 1999. These things are 22 years old. So guys, that solar system that we had was very, very functional, it worked, but with 65 watts per panel, and there was only four of them, I had a max of, well, 3.8 amps, not even four amps each one. Holy crap, guys. It took forever to charge those batteries. Those are the same batteries that we've had here. They're over 12 years old and they're still working just fine. Lead acid batteries. Those are going for about 180 bucks a piece right now. I don't know, leave me a comment. Put it down in the comment section what you guys think about the lithium ion batteries. Are they worth it? All right. So now let's take a look at the upgrade that I did because the inverter's good, the step down's good, the batteries are good, uh, everything in the, in the house is great, but the solar panels were sorely lacking. Okay, so you guys saw what happened with the panels when they blew over, and it's because I did not have a third leg on that, uh, on that mount system. So I had to build a third leg in order to make this thing super strong, and I also had to reinforce the frame. Let me show you what I did. So I had to repair these legs right here, and when I repaired these legs, I actually put a gusset in here on all four legs and I made this a little bit thicker, cut all that off and re-welded those and reinforced those. I also added a third leg going up with a support beam in between and some diagonals. And if you're gonna ask me why these diagonals were at a little bit different lengths, it's because I didn't do a very good job of triangulating this and making it exactly the same distance. So it's a little bit of an angle, so I had to change it a little bit, but whatever, it works. This thing is so solid now. I added a support beam all the way across. Let me show you the side. So I, I triangulated this and made a support beam for these extra wings out here. This thing is so solid. I can still get it to wiggle, but it is way more stiff than ever was. Now these solar panels, I'll show you guys the uh, the specs on these solar panels here. Ionix Smart Solutions, 330 watts each one. 9.6 amps. So as you guys see all these panels up here, I have 12 panels. One, two, three, four, five, six. Each one of these panels, uh, I'm sorry, each one of these panels is 330 watts times 12. It comes out to 3,900. You guys do the math on that. 3,980 watts, just a little under 4,000 watts. Each one of these panels has its own plug and play. These little connectors are fantastic. I soldered on the ends of these things as a male and a female, and then soldered this to the wire that the guy gave me. He gave me a whole roll of this wire and was able to cut and I still need to zip tie everything up to make it really nice and clean, to make it a clean install. I put everything through this conduit right here and the conduit runs down into the box. All right, each one of these solar panels has its own breaker. So if I need to change a panel, I can fl flip off this breaker and unplug it and we're good to go. Well, that was crazy. A little uh, midsummer August storm. You know, you guys will notice the first part of the video, I was wearing a sweatshirt. It was a little bit earlier in the year when I started to do this video. And I'm just now getting around to finishing this thing. So I apologize for the delay, but yeah, when we upgraded this whole thing, we tried to make use of everything we possibly could. I welded up all this frame by myself and we used some uh, polypropylene water line to go underneath and pull the cable through so it's nice and, and watertight. We use a special fitting that goes in the polypropylene with a, with a pipe clamp 
and that goes underneath goes underground and goes up into the house through a pull box into the house and back to this charge controllers wow look at the size of this this is a pretty cool feature right here so if you guys want to see we're in the middle of summertime you can see right now it's at about a 45 to 50 degree 47 degree angle approximately in the winter time the sun goes right over those mountains so here's my solution for so i simply have to tighten it let the lock loose and let this bad boy down So there's a good angle right there guys in the winter time that's where i have my solar panel set you can see the sun when it's over those hills right there is going to be hitting almost perfectly at a perpendicular angle for winter time sun exposure to get to maximize that that direct sun so i'm going to crank it back up to 47 degrees right now though if you need you guys have a question about why i have this ratchet strap right here because I have the one cable going from the, um, from the hook, from the winch system, back up to the top. I'm putting tension on the back of this big frame, and I wanted to make sure to have some tension on the bottom of the frame. I have two connection points right here. The whole frame pivots on two connections. And so I wanted to make sure to have some stability on the bottom as well as the top. I wanna to do a metal bar from here to here that I can unpin and lower it down and pin it off. And that'll actually produce, uh, provide some extra stability for this whole thing. I'm gonna leave the cable on the back because that cable puts a lot of tension on there. That thing will do, I think it's 3,500 pounds on that winch right there. And so I can put 3,500 pounds of pre down pressure on this if I wanted to. And between that and a couple of stabilizer bars on the bottom, this thing isn't going anywhere. We've already had some really, really high winds again since I rebuilt this thing. And uh, you can see it kind of shimmy a little bit in the wind, but this thing is not going anywhere. It's, it's awesome. Okay guys, so there's our upgrade for the solar panels. When we first went off grid and this place was per completely functional with the system that it had in it, um, but the batteries we were constantly worried about and we had to continuously uh, run, the char uh, run the backup generator in order to charge up those batteries when they got too low. And I had originally told Olivia, hey, uh, no curling irons, no hair dryers, and we certainly can't have a microwave. Well, that has all changed, guys. And I'm going to tell you what. Um, you know, we talk about, you know, I got one of those kilowatt uh, wattage usage measuring uh, devices. You guys are all familiar with a kilowatt, right? I'll leave the link down in the description if you guys want to use one of those things. And it'll, you can plug in your appliance and then plug that to the wall and it'll tell you how much, how much energy you're using, how many watts you're using per hour. Um, I had bought one of those things, and so, uh, like the refrigerator is the only thing that we have electric in our house. Um, we had originally came with a propane refrigerator that leaked, but the propane refrigerators, I mean, you're going to spend three to $4,000 for one if you can even get one right now that looks halfway decent. So I went and got an energy efficient refrigerator, uh, super high energy efficient refrigerator, and it uses hardly any power, and it only runs, you know, occasionally, as long as we keep the doors closed, right? So now that we have the solar panels, we run power tools, we run sanders, drills, we charge our batteries, we charge our phones. Uh, of course, phones don't use hardly any power, but when I'm using the, the table saw, for example, or the grinder, um, we do it all during the middle of the day. We vacuum, we do our laundry. So all of our appliances are propane, propane water heater, which uses the most propane. We have a propane dryer. Of course, it has an electric motor to turn, but it, it, the heat is for propane. And then we have an electric stove as well as an electric wall heater, which we only use in the wintertime. So most of our propane is going for our water heater and our stove for cooking. And then everything else that we have in the place, we have LED lights. Everything is very highly energy efficient. Uh, we have our Starlink, which uses, uh, I, supposedly it's 100 watts continuous, especially in the wintertime when, it's, when it has the, uh, the heater to, to melt off the snow and ice. Uh, but other than that, we really don't have anything going except for the refrigerator, which only turns on occasionally. So um, we plug the microwave in occasionally. She uses her hair dryer and a curling iron whenever we go to church or whatever. Um, we don't worry about power anymore. We do all of our high energy usage stuff during the daytime when it's sunny 
because these solar panels are putting out so much power that the batteries are completely topped off, they're in float, and all the power that these things are putting out is going into, say, the vacuum cleaner or the dryer or whatever the case may be. So we no longer worry about power. It is amazing, guys. Um, this was a huge upgrade. I did this uh, last year. And uh, sorry, I didn't film the, the, the construction of the frame or anything, but it's just, you guys have seen me weld before. Um, if you can weld or anybody can, if you know somebody that can actually weld or do a, a custom frame for you or mount, um, or any of your solar installers can do that. Um, I use the Unistrut with the Unistrut bolts and the, and the, and the washers and uh, put this thing together. And it's held up great, except for that one windstorm we had. And I learned my lesson and reinforced it. Luckily, nothing broke. But guys, this was a, a great upgrade for our house. Like I said, we don't you worry about power anymore. Completely self-sufficient, self-determining, and uh, plug and play. And I think I spent with everything um, with everything together, I spent under four thousand dollars for all those panels. So it was way worth the investment. Guys, I hope that uh, helped you guys. Um, if you guys are looking for the uh, for a source for good solar panels, uh, I believe these. I'm not sure if these are Chinese made or if they're um, they're not Canadian. I thought they were Canadian solar, but they're not. Um, but hey, they work, and and it's it's given us complete energy independence. We're not hooked up to the grid. I rarely turn my generator on. If we've watched a movie, uh, a couple of movies in a row, we've had the lights going all night long. We'll get down to you know 85%. I might flick the generator on for for a half an hour just to make sure we're topped off before we go to bed. But at nighttime. We're not using any power. You know, we will use a, we're gonna use a light once in a while, uh, you know, go to the ba bathroom and charging our phones while we're sleeping. But otherwise, we're really not doing a whole lot. Winter time's a little different story. So I do run the generator about once a week, maybe a couple times a week, just to make sure the batteries are topped off. Uh, but other than that, these panels are doing fantastic. So moral of the story, guys, is get more than you think you need. The guy I bought it from, bought all of this stuff from, he has 50 panels on his on his roof, and he welds. I can weld with these panels as well. Uh, I only have a 110 welder, but he can use his 220 welder and weld with it. So, guys, there's the upgrade for you. I hope that helped. Um, it give you kind of an idea of what kind of power we're using and what our power needs are up here. Um, Olivia gets to use her curling iron and, and, um, and the blow dryer and that's good enough for us. So thanks for watching guys. See you guys in the next video. It is a, it's a doozy. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching guys.